Okay, let's dive in. March 2025, Buga, Colombia. There's this, this metallic sphere that shows up. It doesn't just land, it arrives after some really uh, strange maneuvers in the air. The Buga sphere. And instantly, it's global news. Just huge intrigue. Exactly. And the big question, the one that really hooked everyone, was, you know, could this thing actually be challenging physics as we know it? Are we talking anti-gravity here? That anti-gravity claim is definitely the big hook. So what we're doing today is a deep dive. We've got a mix of sources, scientific observations, those initial eyewitness accounts, early analyses. And plenty of online speculation, naturally. Oh, absolutely. So our mission here is to really unpack what's been found, what the scientific perspectives are, and try to uh, separate the solid observations from, well, the speculation surrounding this thing. Right. What do we actually know versus what are people hypothesizing based on these, frankly, pretty wild initial reports? Let's start at the beginning then. March 2nd, 2025. Alto Bonito, Buga, Colombia. The witnesses were Maria and Jose. What do they actually say they saw? Well, they described a silver spherical object doing things aircraft just don't do zigzagging flight paths, glowing, even changing colors. So not just drifting, actively maneuvering in weird ways. Exactly. Defying conventional flight, it sounds like. And Jose, he apparently uses electromagnetic gear, maybe looking for treasure or something. He reported the sphere interacting with a high voltage power line as it descended. That feels significant. It really does. That suggests some kind of electromagnetic emission or interaction, doesn't it? He even filmed it coming down. Right. And those videos went viral pretty fast. By late March, the whole world was watching this thing fly erratically. Yeah, the footage spread like wildfire. And then Jose actually gets his hands on it. He finds it, recovers it. Yeah. Said it weighed about two kilos, maybe 4.4 pounds, and felt refrigerator cold. Cold to the touch, yeah. But then things get even stranger with his personal reports. Uh-huh. He mentioned feeling sick afterwards, nausea, dizziness, mm -hmm. he even claimed his fingerprints changed. Yes, those were his reported effects. Now, it's really important to stress these are personal anecdotal accounts. They haven't been medically verified. Sure, but understandably, it raised some initial biohazard flags, even if unconfirmed. Definitely. You hear things like that, you start wondering. Then David Velez enters the picture, local guy as a company in Germany dealing with electromagnetic devices. He gets involved, and according to him, the sphere's behavior gets even more bizarre. This is where the fluctuating weight claims come in. Velez apparently reported it going from the initial 2 kilograms up to 10 kilograms, then settling around 6 kilograms. Whoa. That's traumatic. Right. And he also claimed water would instantly vaporize if it touched the sphere, and that it resisted heating up to 400 degrees Celsius. Okay, those are some pretty extraordinary claims about its physical properties. Mm -hmm. Instantly vaporizing water but resisting heat. That sounds contradictory almost. It definitely challenges conventional material science, if accurate. If accurate, yeah. Big if. How could those claims be wrong? Simple measurement errors, environmental interference. Could be several things. Measurement error is always possible, especially with fluctuating readings. Environmental factors, maybe humidity or static affecting the scale. For the heat and water, perhaps a surface chemical reaction rather than just thermal properties, we'd need controlled experiments to know. Okay. And then Velas passes the sphere on to a name many will recognize in this field, Shemé Mossan. Yes. And Mossan's team, including a radiologist, Dr. Jose Luis Velazquez, starts their analysis. They released X-ray images when May 2025. That sounds right. May 2025. And those X-rays gave us the first peek inside. What did they show? They suggested it was solid, made of three distinct layers. Looked like metal-like material, maybe titanium or steel was the initial thought. And wasn't there something about the outer layer's density being unusual, like comparable to human bone? Exactly, which is incredibly strange for something described as metallic. Bone gets its density from complex organic structures. So for a metal sphere to have that density, it implies either a totally unknown alloy, or maybe it's not even fully metallic, a composite perhaps? That's the puzzle. It definitely warrants some serious material science investigation on its own. And inside. It wasn't just solid metal, right? No, far from it. The x-rays showed um, 18 smaller spheres, microspheres, arranged around a central nucleus. They called it a chip. And the arrangement wasn't random, apparently. It described as non-random, yeah. Strongly suggesting intentional engineering, not just some natural formation or accidental structure. And maybe the most startling finding from Velasquez's team, at least initially. Mm -hmm. No signs of how it was put together. That was a key point in their report. No visible wells, no joints. 
If that holds up, it suggests a manufacturing process way beyond how we typically build things. So Dr. Velasquez concluded it was artificial, no welds, complex internal structure, mm. but stressed the need for more tests, right? Absolutely. He was clear. It is of artificial origin. More testing is needed to establish its origin. He didn't jump to conclusions, but highlighted the anomalies. But couldn't advanced 3D metal printing or similar techniques create something seamless? Are we sure it's beyond known tech? That's a fair point. Advanced additive manufacturing can create very complex, seamless shapes. But you'd still need to see if those methods match the specific reported features, the layering, the microsphere arrangement, the potential material properties. It's not impossible. It's terrestrial, just maybe highly advanced or classified. Okay, so a complex object, possibly manufactured in an advanced way. But wait, there's more. Engravings. Yes. Another layer to the mystery, reports of engravings resembling ancient scripts, things like Nordic runes, ogham, even Mesopotamian cuneiform. Wow, okay, that's quite a mix. Those scripts are from very different times and places, aren't they? Extremely different. Nordic runes from Germanic tribes, ogham from early Ireland, cuneiform from ancient Mesopotamia. Finding them together on one object is deeply perplexing. And they weren't just scratched on the surface. How were they found? Apparently, they were etched from within the material. So, invisible on the outside, didn't even show up on the initial x-rays. That implies a very deliberate, maybe non-traditional way of embedding them. Wild. And Mossan's team used AI to try and make sense of them. What message did they supposedly get? The AI interpretation was well, very abstract. Something about origin of birth through union and energy, cycle of transformation, consciousness. Very philosophical stuff. But how reliable is AI for deciphering potentially unknown, ancient-looking symbols? Are there precedents for that working? It's tricky. AI is great at finding patterns in known data, but deciphering a truly unknown script without context or a key, like a Rosetta Stone, that's a huge leap. The AI might just be pattern matching or imposing meaning based on its training data. So that message needs a massive grain of salt. Right. Fascinating, but highly speculative on the meaning front. Okay, so moving on, other claims started surfacing, right? Particularly on X from at just Krios, building on some of these physical properties. Yeah, at just Krios posted about its hardness, reported a Brunel hardness of 330. Which is high, low. What does that mean? It's significantly harder than standard aerospace aluminum, roughly double. Brunel measures resistance to indentation. Yep. So 330 suggests a very tough material. Okay. And this account also mentioned the electromagnetic fields again. Yes, referencing the measurements by biologist Jose de la Cirios Lopez. Tying back into those unusual magnetic properties, the interaction with power lines, Jose's equipment. It starts to form a sort of coherent, if strange, picture. And at Huscrios also reinforced those earlier claims about resisting heat and vaporizing water, just adding to this image of a very peculiar object. Okay, let's get to the core of the excitement, the part that made this explode, the anti-gravity claims. Where did they really come from? Primarily, they seem rooted in those eyewitness accounts of the sphere's impossible flight, the zigzagging, the hovering, and also those reports from Velez about the fluctuating weight. And Mossan's team leaned into this possibility too, didn't they? Oh, definitely. They've been quite vocal about suggesting it represents advanced technology capable of manipulating gravity. But crucially, we need to state this clearly. There's no peer-reviewed scientific data confirming anti-gravity, is there? Absolutely not. The established scientific community is, quite rightly, very cautious. Anti-gravity would overturn fundamental physics. You need extraordinary proof for that. In peer review, maybe we should just quickly explain why that's so important in science. Sure. Peer review is basically quality control. Before a scientific paper is published, other independent experts in the same field examine the methods, the data, the conclusions. They look for errors, flaws in logic, alternative interpretations. It's designed to ensure the research is rigorous and credible. Without that process, claims remain preliminary. Got it. So no peer-reviewed studies published on the Bugis fears alleged anti-gravity? None. Mainstream scientists are mostly quiet, likely waiting for something concrete and verifiable to analyze. Though some of the initial findings, while not confirming anti-gravity, have been sort of interpreted in that direction like Dr. Velasquez's comments. Indirectly, perhaps. Velasquez didn't say it's anti-gravity, but he did point to the weird construction, the lack of welds, the precise internal structure. How did he link that even tentatively? He suggested that level of engineering could imply a technology capable of manipulating fundamental forces, which might include gravity or mass. Things like the reported weight changes or magnetic effects, while not proof, 
aren't inconsistent with some theoretical ideas about mass alteration. But again, he stressed more testing is needed. And Rios Lopez's electromagnetic field measurements, how do they fit in? Those unusual magnetic field readings are definitely interesting. Some observers, like at Feminist Letter on X, have speculated they could be linked to exotic propulsion, maybe manipulating fields to generate lift, sort of a quantum or frequency-based drive. Tying it to the changing hardness claims in field emissions, too. Right. Some see those as potentially consistent with theoretical field manipulation concepts, but we <laughs> have to keep saying it. This is interpretation of preliminary, non-peer-reviewed work, highly speculative at this stage. And the skeptics, what are their main arguments? Well, skepticism is high. Many physicists are just waiting for actual data. On places like Reddit, people have questioned the initial methods like using equine imaging x-ray protocols. Was the radiologist the right expert for a potentially alien artifact? That's a fair question from you, Dragon Fruit Odd, 1989. Makes sense. The core skeptical view is, Anti-gravity needs rock-solid proof. Things like isotopic analysis showing mass change or peer-reviewed studies clearly demonstrating gravitational negation. The weight changes. Could be errors, could be environmental effects. It's not proof of defying gravity. It's worth putting this in a bit of theoretical context, too. People like Dr. Michio Kaku often discuss anti-gravity when talking about super-advanced civilizations. Does the Bugosphere narrative map onto those ideas at all? It touches on them. Kaku and others theorize that type 2 or 3 civilizations might manipulate space-time or quantum fields for propulsion. The spheres reported flight, weight shifts, magnetic effects. You can see why people draw parallels to hypothetical gravitic drives. Like the cavity resonator idea floated by a feminist letter based on the internal structure. Exactly. Speculating that the symmetrical microspheres might be part of such a system, but, and it's a huge, but these are just attempts to fit the sparse observations into highly theoretical frameworks. It's completely unverified for the bugosphere itself. So, bottom line. Intriguing parallels to theory. But the anti-gravity claim itself remains pure speculation without solid evidence. Precisely. The burden of proof is immense and it hasn't been met. Not even close, scientifically speaking. Okay, setting aside anti-gravity for a moment, what about other specific scientific observations? The material composition, potentially titanium or steel, but super hard. And that comment from at TruthPolex on X about aluminum hardness changing with magnetism. Right, the high Brunel hardness 330 suggests an advanced alloy. At TruthPolex's point about hardness changing under magnetism is fascinating because it brings up the idea of meta-materials. Meta-materials, what are those? They're engineered materials with properties you don't find in nature, often derived from their structure rather than just their composition. They can have dynamic properties changing in response to stimuli, like magnetic fields. If the bugosphere used something like that, well, it could explain some weirdness, but again, needs actual analysis. And the heat resistance versus water vaporization still seems puzzling. Mm -hmm. Withstanding 400 degrees C, yet instantly turning water to steam. It is odd. High heat resistance usually means slow heat transfer. Instantly vaporizing water suggests rapid energy transfer at the point of contact, maybe an internal energy source being discharged, or a chemical reaction on the surface. Velasquez's team didn't report on thermal properties, so this rests solely on Velez's claims for now. Needs verification. And the biohazard aspect, Jose getting sick, any follow up there? No medical verification has surfaced, so it remains an unconfirmed personal report. While Rios Lopez's EM field findings could theoretically have biological effects, linking them to Jose's reported symptoms is pure speculation without medical data or analysis of the sphere for radiation or toxins. These anecdotes add to the intrigue, but aren't scientific evidence. And lastly, the engravings. Velasquez called them highly unusual, etched from within. That suggests advanced fabrication, right? But the AI message, still just speculative. Definitely. The existence and internal etching of the engravings are notable findings suggesting advanced manufacturing, but the AI generated meaning. It's an interpretation without linguistic or cryptographic proof. Interesting, adds to the mystique, but doesn't give us solid info about origin or purpose. It really feels like we have a lot of smoke, but the source of the fire is very unclear. Which brings us to the critiques and limitations of everything we know so far. Lack of peer review is the big one. Absolutely critical. No official vetted studies. The initial x-rays came via Masson's team, and his controversial history inevitably raises questions about bias. The Reddit points about using an animal radiologist and equine protocols also highlight concerns about whether the right expertise was applied initially. And the chain of custody. Jose finds it, gives it to Velez, who gives it to Masson. That's not ideal, is it? 
Not for rigorous scientific investigation, no. Each handoff increases the risk of contamination, damage, or even tampering. Hmm. And Velez apparently refusing to involve authorities early on limited access for mainstream institutions. And circling back to anti-gravity is still just speculation without that hard proof of mass negation or space-time warping. Plus, those suggestions on deny ignorance that the videos look like viral marketing. Yeah, you can't entirely dismiss that possibility in today's world. The found footage aesthetic can be manufactured, and the weight fluctuations might just be fluctuations, not physics-defying events. And Masson's involvement itself casts a shadow for many, due to things like the debunked alien mummies in 2017. It's unavoidable. Past controversial claims make people skeptical of new ones presented by the same source, regardless of the potential merit of the new claims themselves. Critics on X and Reddit often point to a pattern of sensationalism. Okay, so if we consider these limitations, what are the more mundane alternative explanations? Could this be human-made? That's definitely on the table. Maybe a classified drone using something exotic like magnetohydrodynamic MHD propulsion. Hmm. NASA experimented with MHD concepts. It involves manipulating plasma with magnetic fields for thrust. Could that explain the magnetic interactions and weird flight? Potentially, yes. Mm -hmm. But the reported super hardness and that complex internal structure with microspheres might be harder to square with known MHD drone prototypes. Okay. What about just a hoax? Always a possibility. Some Redditors felt the engravings looked sloppy. Masan's history plays into this theory for some, and as mentioned, the video style felt like a potential marketing stunt to users like Ultra Budgie on Deny Ignorance. Or just misidentified? Space junk. A weather balloon component. Less likely, given the specific reported features, space debris or weather instruments don't typically have layers, precisely arranged internal microspheres, and engravings etched from the inside. It seems too complex for those explanations. Whatever it is, the Bugosphere certainly made waves globally, didn't it? Kind of like the Bet Sphere back in the 70s. Exactly. The Bet Sphere generated huge buzz. People claimed it moved on its own. Turned out to be industrial equipment, likely a check valve. The Bugosphere taps into that same public fascination with unexplained aerial phenomena. And the potential impact is huge, depending on the answer. If it's extraterrestrial, well, that changes everything. Physics, our place in the cosmos. Revolutionary, absolutely. Confirmation of alien life and technology. But even if it's human-made advanced tech, that's also a massive reveal. And if it's a hoax. Then it's a case study in how hard it is to verify UAP claims in the digital age, with viral information and potential manipulation. It underscores why we need bodies like ARO or the NASA UAP group doing careful, methodical investigation. It's had a big cultural impact too, especially in Colombia, playing into existing UFO stories and local myths. And the online debate continues at Truth Polex and Feminist Letter Theorizing, Skeptics Demanding Proof. It's a microcosm of the whole UAP discussion right now. So what needs to happen next to actually solve this? Where does the research need to go? Well, the consensus among those calling for serious investigation is pretty clear. First, independent analysis, get material scientists involved for isotopic tests, proper CT scans of the internal structure, spectroscopy to really nail down the composition. Beyond Massan's team, basically. Yes, independent labs. Second, Rios Lopez's electromagnetic work needs peer review. Let other experts examine his methods and data. Third, institutional involvement. Get NASA, Aero, or credible university research groups involved. That brings resources and removes bias concerns. And transparency. Crucial. Release the raw data from any tests. Let the wider scientific community scrutinize it. That's how you build confidence and move past speculation. Okay. So wrapping this up, we're left with a fascinating mystery. The Bugosphere has these intriguing claims, some initial scientific observations pointing to unusual characteristics. But a real lack of conclusive, rigorously verified evidence, especially for the most sensational claims like anti-gravity. Right. The jury is very much still out. Lots of questions, few definitive answers. It highlights the gap between intriguing anomaly and scientific proof. More work, independent work, is clearly needed. Which leaves you, our listener, with something to ponder. Think about the implications. What if, hypothetically, those anti-gravity claims were eventually proven true? Or even if it turned out to be some radical, previously secret human technology? What questions would that raise for you about physics, technology, secrecy, and maybe even our future? Certainly a lot to chew on.